You're 30. You're 30. I want to hit 30 and be like, ah! it's so fun. I love it. I'm over here like, I just need to go on a date. And you're like, we're planning our wedding. Like, it's so <laughs> different. Do your skincare. Wear your sunscreen. Wear your sunscreen. Go with your gut. Go with your gut. So I should be more I think you should. Okay. I think okay. you should. I got a lot of people commenting on it like, Oh no, I'm hoping this is April Fool. <gasps> this too shall pass. This, this too, too shall, shall pass. pass. <laughs> the Lord never gives you anything you can't handle. <laughs> the following podcast is a Dear Media production. Pretty basic. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Pretty Basic. I almost said the other name. You did? I almost did. <gasps> already only two episodes and you're already fucking up who was here from day one with you yeah you're just gonna forget our basic bitches all that we've had our basic babes all that we've built all that we've been through all that we've been through we're so different we're i would so have never different. i would have can never. we have merch that says we're so different <laughs> i feel like that would be so good i do love that but we're like so different then people have to explain it. I think no, that's what like, I think about when I make merch. I'm like, I don't want people to have to like have a whole story of like, why do you have a shirt that says we're so different? I just love, for me, it's more of a inside joke between us and who's wearing okay, it. And I get then we that. can do like 50. We don't have to do a lot. Okay. You know what I mean? Like it can be like low. I mean, comment down below if you guys want, we're so different. I still to this day get questions for, um, Constantly be, be laugh, be silly, oh. be yourself, be you, be silly, be yourself. I still get comments. Like sometimes, clearly if we were in it for the money, that would have been out. That yeah. would have been out yeah. for the next day. It's yeah. just, oh my, I will, I will never get rid of it. We've cleaned through my closet multiple times of just like getting rid of stuff and whatever. One, my, my mom was actually, this was a few months ago. My mom was over and she just loves help. Don't you love when like your mom comes over and is just like, oh, like, hon, let me cook for you. Let me do it. And I'm like, yeah, I'm 30 years old, but every, also like, please. Oh no, every um holiday, I just, my mom is in the kitchen cleaning every dish after and stays like till 10 PM. My dad's like, let's go. We got to go. And she's like cleaning every dish. I'm like, please stop. And at, but keep going. When I first moved out, it bothered me because I was like, I'm an adult now. I don't need it. And now I'm like, oh, that's her love language. Oh, really like, sweet. And also I can't, like, I'm sure when I'm a mom, I'll do the exact same thing. So she was helping me, um, going through my closet, we were just like putting things in different piles and she held up the be silly, be, she's like trash, Toss, right? Trash. <laughs> I was like, oh, how dare you? I was like, never, I need to frame that shit. I regret <gasps> giving mine away. I can't believe, I know, but I couldn't simply make a new one though. I just hope someone went thrifting it's and saw it and said, that's fire. One of four <laughs> in this whole universe, one of four. No, like collectible, <laughs> worth something. Collectible. Oh my God, the way that people, look for rare Pokemon cards. There is a be silly, be you. Be yourself, infinity. It's so, it was so ugly, it was cute. I'm gonna wear it next week. <laughs> Wait, you should. Oh, I am. Keep pranking me. Okay. I like the pranks. You pranked me on that one. I know, but I just like, you pranked me recently with the outfit oh. that went a little viral. It did go a little viral. Everyone was dying at you. <laughs> you being like, and you chose to dress ugly today. <laughs> Everyone was like, that was the most Remy response ever. Oh my God, no, I'm dead. I thought, I'm keep my comments to myself. No, I have sure. to say though on that episode, I mean, um, I just, I was expecting people to be like, what a bad friend. Cause I was not being the best friend in that moment, but I was being nice. Like I thought I was being a good friend, but being nice, I should have been more honest. But again, it wasn't as bad as, as you were thinking it was gonna be. It really wasn't. It, like you pulled it off and that's a testament to you. <laughs> and cheers to yourself. And you know, and to you. <laughs> to you. <laughs> and to you. And to you. Wait to spin that one. <laughs> I have to say also in that episode, uh, that's the one where I shaking, crying, sobbed. And everybody was really, really nice in the comments. I just want to say thank you guys so much because it's so funny because we'll record two weeks early mm -hmm. and then two weeks later, you know, it'll come out and I'm like, oh, I'm good now. Or you but get DMs <laughs> and people are like, I'm so sorry. You're like, what yeah. happened? Yeah, no, I, I like, I, I mean, that's something that also, it's never just a, a, a linear thing or like you go through it once and, and you're good. But two weeks later after the episode had come out, I was in a really good place. And I was like, oh, I can't believe I was, how sad for me which is what you told me to do. And I watched it back. You gave me homework. I, I saw, did we, how, how's the homework? You, I actually applied the homework like the next day because we, we were working on the pretty X unfiltered banner. 
And I was like, I got it, guys. I'll do it. And I couldn't do it. I didn't know how to work Photoshop in that capacity. And so normally I would have spent a lot of time like trying to research or do all these things. And I, I reached out to Alicia and I said, hi, I'm so sorry to bother, but could you, could you help me with this? Wait, I like, I wish I knew that was you doing your homework. So I was like, yeah, sure. Like, <laughs> I, like, I was like, oh, I didn't even think anything of it. I like normally would have spent hours and wasted so much time trying to like watch tutorials and things. I was like, she asked me, she told me to ask for help. So I'm going to ask for help. And you delivered in like 30 seconds. Oh my God. Wait. So I tried. No, I maybe that. that wasn't what you were asking me to ask for help with, but normally I wouldn't have. No, anything's better than nothing. Yeah. Well, thank you for the banner. It looks great. I was on, <laughs> I was on the channel on my TV and like on the big TV. Looks amazing. Oh, thank I God. I might just send you a photo. Beautifully stretched I'm, out. You know what's so funny is whenever I make those um, like dimensions, I'm like, no one's going to see it on like the big one TV because it shows you like on iPhone on laptop on mm -hmm, desktop iPad. on TV and it looked I should have sent you a photo it looked beautiful Mwah, ah, such good work thank you so much you're thank so, you so much. what else is new so we released a couple episodes of pretty x unfiltered and it's been doing so well people are subscribe. liking it so much I just want to say constructive criticism taken I need to stop laughing into the microphone no okay the the next episode that's not out yet I purposely would put my mic down same when I wasn't talking because I realized I do the same thing. And I just think they're so funny. And every time we've done, uh, like when they came on here, we went on their show before the new show actually started. I would catch myself like, <laughs> and like you could hear it across the whole episode. And I'm like, how annoying. And then watching episode one and two back, I'm like, oh, that's so annoying. So constructive criticism taken i i really did try to remove the mic i will say i got really drunk in episode three no it's hilarious like, it's out by the time you guys see us it, it'll be the birthday oh, one yeah it, i i'm please do me a huge favor go watch it and just take a photo of remy when she's blank face with the the car's sunglass or the the bedazzled sunglasses because we basically did a birthday party for heath and i because obviously we have the same birthday um and so we did it like we decorated half Rim and Zane decorated it like half little boy themed like cars and then half like unicorn. And we just had like a joint birthday party episode. So it was so funny cupcakes. because cupcakes, cupcakes. We oh, had these little tire um, cups cup like thermos. a party favor yeah, like if you went little, to like a little birthday party yes and obviously we filled it with alcohol because like haha it's funny obviously. but it was just hilarious because there were so many times this episode i look over at remy and <laughs> she's wearing a unicorn like party headband has these bedazzled heart glitter sunglasses that are meant for like a three-year-old so they're so small and like put together <laughs> and then she's holding her tire and then straight face like <laughs> like it's so funny so please go send a photo and Alicia dm it to us or something I, it's so good we like talked about we were driving the other day and she's like do you remember when we talked about this do you remember when we talked about that and i blacked out a lot of it but i was there but i wasn't <laughs> you Sorry, know i just i pictured I was there but i wasn't we have put a screenshot in this right now of, of my face <laughs> i just second. i i didn't eat enough that day because i was so busy running around and i that morning i work, woke up at 4 30 in the morning and then i went with mia to the gym to do one of her workouts you told me you're oh doing that and i was like you tell the story. are another i could never but i like I did it because Mia and I did a video recently. We did a little collab, which Ooh. still to this day, when I like collab with you guys, like my little <laughs> inner fangirl goes off. I said, hashtag Ramia. Ramia. And it'll just never get old. And so we did a video where I, cause you know, I do the videos where I'm a, a private chef. Oh yeah. For one, one of my, my friends. One, I'm sorry. One of my favorite collabs we've ever done. I mean, you were <laughs> the flagship original video. I've only done two actually. I think I've done you and then I did Cal, but it's so yours was so funny. Cause I went to your house and did it obviously mm -hmm. at Cal's it's my house too. So it's not as exciting, but for Mia's, I was like, you know what, instead of just doing one day of cooking, she's obviously very into fitness and mm, very much prepping. meal prepping, very much into like hitting a protein goal, uh, being in a caloric deficit, all the macro, macro things. Yeah. So I was like, wait, I want to do, cause there's a few things that I've been cooking lately where when I make food, I'm like, some of my life, I'm like, oh, they would like this. Yeah. So I've been doing egg bites for myself. I did like some chicken drumsticks and the way that I will travel with Mia and she'll bring a vat of chicken drumsticks and just eat them. Oh like my God. morning, night and day, yeah. like all day long. So I was making drumsticks, I was like, she would love this. So why don't I do a video where I'm meal prepping for her for the week? And I did all the math. That's I was so like, good. so college professor. And I sat down and I, I did all the macros, fat, uh, carbs, protein, all the things. And I cooked for her for the week. And then for her video, she's like, come work out with me. And I was like, okay, here we go. So I woke up at 4.30. Oof. Met her at the gym or I brought the food to her. Did like I was like a me meal kit delivery sleeping? service. 
I didn't because I didn't have any thoughts in my head. Like I truly <laughs> didn't think anything. But also fun fact, I told Mia this already. Mia's really good friends with Jake Thomas, mm -hmm. who if you guys don't know, is so obviously famously known for being Matt McGuire, Lizzie McGuire's little brother. I would fangirl probably. He's so nice. He's so sweet and so fun and easy to talk to. But like it was so early in the morning and Mia at one point had like made a gym friend. So she like walked away. So it was just... Jake and I mm -hmm. talking and he gave me his ankle strap to bother or to borrow. We were like, you know, hitting it off. New, new friends. Hey buddy. <laughs> no, literally I was just like, I was asking him about his day and like his interests and things. And then it had just been so early and I was so tired and I needed to leave because I had to get home to shower and go to a meeting. And so I was like, okay, bye Mia. And I like went to give Jake back his strap. And I actively have to remember his name is Jake. Like Not Matt. No, I almost just called him Matt again right now. And I said, thanks, Jake, for letting me use your strap. And then I, he kind of paused. And then I was like, oh my God, I called him the wrong name. Like I forget, I forget because he's Matt McGuire. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, he is iconic. Yeah. And so I like paused and then I spiraled my whole way home. And I was like, oh my God, I'm such an idiot. And I couldn't remember what name I called him because it was so early. And then you convince yourself both ways happened. Yes. You're like, I definitely said Matt. And then you're like, no, 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 I, I said Jake. Both but multiverses happened and both occurred at the same time. I did say the right name, thank God. Thank God. And um, yeah, I spiraled all day about that. That's Went to same. my lunch oh, meeting. Sorry. No, you're so fine. Went to my meeting, got stopped by that girl who said she saw you at the Grove. Oh yeah. Met a few subscribers. And then I came to the recording. So that's why I didn't have time to eat that day. And I also oh. was so tired. So that's why I got so drunk and I, I was just, out. I could never, plan to do that early of a workout one ever but to a day that we record yeah no i, I won't would, be doing that again <laughs> i was like when you told me the night before also we both went to bed at like 10 i went 11. home and i got a denny's burger and i, I was went to like sleep. what no it was a, an eventful day though i saw the clip of um of trisha's podcast which people tagged us into being like oh yeah trisha talked about you guys one fucking love her i just have to say trisha paytas i love you so much no like i Wish I was reincarnated as Malibu. Oh, and I can be Elvis. Yeah. <laughs> you kidding me? I just like, I, and I saw in the comments, a lot of people, I think someone clipped the Trisha podcast and they're like, Trisha's been like a, like a fan or like a supporter of us for so long. And we are so grateful and lucky to her for supporting us for so long. Cause it really, it means the world. It really does. Well, where I was going with that so was, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh my, I love Trisha tour. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're so good. I was just like, where I was going with that was she had mentioned um, like how you and I have such a, like a clean record and and how, how can we do that? And I'm like, because I'm too scared to say anything to anyone ever. True. Very true. <laughs> like literally I'm like, oh, I would never say anything. Like I can't, like no. I'm like, I have my own fucking mental health to deal with. I can't even deal with other people. I but don't want drama. I don't want drama. No, that's the epitome of your life. No, I know. And I'm just like, <laughs> anytime anything comes on, I'm like, you are no, you know, you are the girl in Mean Girls who's like, can we all just have rainbows like, and can we just make a cake of rainbows and just all hold each hold hands? That's how I feel. But lovely Trisha. <laughs> we love Skims here at Pretty Basic. I still can't believe they're working with us. I am we're both the biggest fans ever. I've been really loving their cotton jersey t-shirt lately. You guys, Ashley has literally stolen three <gasps> of these shirts from my closet. <gasps> That she's had them so long, they're basically just hers now. You know what that means now? You get to steal three things from her closet. Yeah, well, I would take back the Skims ones. I ended up just buying new ones. Because uh, I was like, I'll be a good sister. You can have these. Because she like never, she never does that. So if she ever does do something like that, that means she's obsessed with it. <gasps> but needless to say, the cotton jersey t-shirts, I, there is some, I don't know what's in the fabric. It's amazing. The shades bone and mineral are truly like a wardrobe staple. They just, they lay on your body so well. And I've never had a t-shirt do that before. I feel so good. It's like fitted. It's not too tight. Um, and it just, it just makes me feel super confident when I'm wearing it. I was editing a vlog last night and I was wearing my Skims Fits Everybody t-shirt bra in black onyx. And I wore the Fits Everybody t-shirt on top. And oh my God, it just was like watching that video back of me. Oh, I looked amazing. Uh, no, I bet it's you so smoothing. It's so comfortable. And I love the idea of just like wearing a blue jean with like one of the t-shirts and then dressing it up with some jewelry or the cute shoes or maybe my pumps when I get my pumps. Like it's going to be so cute. Yeah. And I feel like I've always been more into crop tops because I just, I like how they lay on my body, I guess, but I've never felt comfortable in just a t-shirt. I feel like they're usually very drowning on me where Ashley pulls off. She'll just like wear a baggy t-shirt and it looks so good on her. And I've always been so jealous. And I swear this is the first time I actually feel 
super like confident and sexy just wearing a t-shirt and jeans. And like you said, just putting in a little jewelry, boom. They're always hitting the nail on the head with everything. So shop the Skims t-shirt shop at skims.com. Now available in sizes extra extra small to 4X. Plus get free shipping on orders over $75. If you haven't yet, be sure to let them know we sent you. After you placed your order, select podcast in the survey and select our show in the drop down menu that follows. The new star series, Mary and George, starring Julianne Moore and Nicholas Gelatine tells a story almost too outrageous to be true, but shockingly it is. With next to nothing to her name and looking to elevate her social standing, Mary Villers sets her handsome and charming son George on the path to seduce King James I and become his all-powerful lover. Trust me, you've never seen a mother-son duo like this before. This show is full of wit, scandal, action, and did I mention Julianne Moore? I mean, we all love Julianne Moore. She's so, 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 so iconic. She's been in so many iconic roles and also just like seems like the nicest woman in the world. Something this audacious and sexy is as genre-bending as it gets. You won't be able to look away. Watch Mary and George only on Stars and the Stars app. This year have, I don't know what happened, but like since turning 29, I've become so much more chill about things, but I think it's because I have, l- it wasn't even like an, o- it, it was an overnight thing. It wasn't even like a conscious thought or decision to like be this way because I've been wanting to be this way for so long. <laughs> Like long I've been no, trying for so long and I don't know what I don't know if it was like getting back into therapy I don't know if it was just getting older but like for some reason now things are rolling off my back so much more easily than they used to and I don't know what it is can you hear my stomach growling so no. okay good um <laughs> I don't know what it was but I'm sure grateful for it oh my god no I I swear I actually did a TikTok about this, which we could even dive into if we want. I did a TikTok saying like, because I'm turning 31 on Friday, which is crazy. crazy. Like literally the other week, like a week ago, I met someone and said, oh yeah, I just recently turned 30 because I've been saying that the past year. And then I said, God damn, I'm turning 31 next week. I did not just recently turn 30. This is crazy. So thinking of that, I did a TikTok of things I feel like that have really, I've really learned after turning 30. And a lot of people really liked that and resonated with it, especially because I feel like a lot of people look up to us as big sisters just on the internet. And um, I don't know. I feel like that's content I would have loved to watch. Um, I mean, I would love to absorb all of that. Oh my God. But that's one thing I said. It's so weird. It's so cliche, but all the things people told me is the same advice I'm giving people. It's the same advice I'm giving you. It's like, oh yeah, you just stop caring what people think about you. Yeah. And it's not even a, suddenly you don't care about other people's opinions. And this is just, at least for me, it's a, I'm so exhausted of caring about other people's opinions. I'm tired of it. I don't want to do that anymore. Mm. Like, yeah, it's a whole different approach to not caring because it's just, I've spent probably years If I added up all the time, I stressed over thinking what other people think. Probably at least a solid year of my life. I feel that. Has been wasted. Probably more. As many times as Cal's seen Dune. No. (laughs) He went again last night. Is that a six time? Yep. Oh my God. (laughs) And it's a three hour movie? Yep. Three times six? 18 hours. I already talked to him about it last night. (laughs) I agree. That's how much I spend in a week. Or I did spend in a week worrying about what people thought about me. I agree. Oh my God. A thousand percent. So it's... Like, yeah, I still care if people have wrong opinions of me or they, especially anything character related. But in the end, I'm just so tired of wasting time and energy stressing over it when in reality, like 90% of the time, they're actually probably not thinking that. Like actually. And then two, if they are, I mean, it's definitely circumstantial. Like if it's a close friend, like it's up to them to bring it up to you. You know what I mean? Or if it's like a stranger, it's like, why do we care what they think? Like, yeah. In the end, it's, it's, you're so tired of wasting time and energy that something did even just click for me of like, okay, I I don't care anymore. Exhausted is like the perfect word for it because I feel that I felt that and it shifted for me overnight because I used to care so much. Even like when your friend's mad at you and you're like, you can't eat because you're so stressed and anxious and like all, just like all of that effort and energy, you're finally like, I don't want to deal with this back and forth and waste like three days. I'd rather just like talk to them and like deal with it. And you just don't care as much about like what people think of you. It's hard when we do this because we've had so many public opinions on Mm -hmm. everything we do for so long. And I remember always asking you like, or saying, I don't think I'll ever be able to not care. And again, sometimes of course I care and it just depends on the day. But lately I think my mental health and things have just been better that I'm like, oh, these people can think what they want, whether it's like mean about me or just truly wrong about me or uh, what is the word? just hypothesizing or just, Mm. you know, um, 
theorizing about certain things. And they used to really bother me. And I'm like, now it's it's okay. Like they, that's part of, that comes with this territory. It does. It and really does. I, I can let that affect me as much as I want. I'll probably never meet these people in person. Mm-hmm. And the, I'll never actually see them. And I always remember if I do get bothered, close my computer, I'm yes. home. Isn't it weird? No one's there. Yeah. Oh, it's, the amount of times I'll just turn mind. off my phone and I'm a new person. I'm like, yeah. oh, oh my God, what do I want to do? I'm bored. It's like it's true. weird. It's very true. Oh my God. Yeah. I feel like one, it does come with the territory. And two, the way that I even like, it's entertainment. Like I watch certain influencers and I'm like, oh, did they break up? But I'm, it's not that it's, I'm just like curious. It's like, hypothesizing. It's hypothesis- yeah, yeah. It's just like, it's just like watching a TV show where you like, you want two characters to get together sure. or like or like Kylie and Jordan or Kim and yes. whoever yeah I'm oh my always God. in on all that it's oh my so God. true no. it's all pop culture a core memory I have is when we went to Big Bear a few years ago with um a lot of like you know the lifestyle girlies and like one of the last like big Big Bear trips and all that kind of stuff and we were having that one heart to heart and Aspen Ovard was there mm-hmm. and I, she is someone I've always looked up to we still want her on the pot you're welcome anytime but like she's busy having kids who <laughs> was there as well you're right. She Cove was pregnant. Was and she didn't know. I know. Cove came on the trip. Oh my God. <laughs> um, no wonder you love her so yeah, much. Yeah, I know. I just look connected. <laughs> You're like, I was there. Auntie Remy was there. <laughs> um, and I distinctly remember you were talking, you were like, I really struggle with hate comments and people saying things. And she was so, her advice was so good. And I think she was the only one in the group who had the complete opposite perspective mm-hmm. because all of us are like, oh my God, people don't like us. Well, yeah. Like whatever. Yeah. And she's like, no if they don't know me, they don't have an opinion. They don't get to have an opinion about me. Like I only care what my close friends and family think of me because they're allowed to have an opinion on me. Like if it's a stranger, why would I care? Yeah. But it's different to say that and want to say that and believe that she actually felt that way and believed it. And I remember watching that. I was like, I'm so jealous, but also it's so beautiful to see a whole other person's like actual perspective because she was just so matter of fact, no, why would I care about that? You shouldn't. And I was like, but I do. <laughs> and like, she's like so much younger than us. So, so much, much wiser. Younger. Oh my God. Like so, so much. So th- I'm, that's a core memory of. I remember that too. Of that. And I do think that also <laughs> goes to say like having a close group of friends and family. And I think it's hard in your twenties when you are trying to find your people and your friends. And of course you want people to, it's pack mentality. Like you want people to like you. Like you don't want, I feel like that even goes deep into like biological stuff of, you know, when you you don't, I don't know. Like that's scary. Like to be disowned by, what am I saying? Disowned when it's crazy. I, I know that one. I went <laughs> crazy there. It just, it makes sense why we all care so much. But in the end, I think when you actually finally do have those people and your close friends and family to finally have that, I think she always pops into my head of like, well, I should care what they think. Cause they're allowed to have an opinion of me versus these strangers or people who maybe they're just like, we're friends or acquaintances. And I see them frequently, but in the end, they don't know me mm-hmm. and that's okay. And I don't know them. It's, it kind of reminds me of when you're dating and you're trying to convince, everybody says, you know, it happens when you least expect it. And then, so you're trying to convince yourself, like, I don't care. I, I'm not expecting it. I'm not expecting it. And then it doesn't happen because you're expecting it versus like this. When I was trying so hard to not care, I was like, don't care, don't care, don't care. Yeah, I did. I cared. Yeah. Then all of a sudden I woke up one morning. I'm like, I actually don't care. And again, to say, that's not every day, mm-hmm. but for some reason lately, I think it's just like getting older and understanding yourself more and knowing that in no world am I going to be able to make everybody like me. Like, I think I finally swallowed that pill of like, yeah. you can keep trying, but it's not going to work out for you, girl. Oh my God. Uh, another thing I'd mentioned in, in that TikTok was that you just, you only have one body. Like that was, and so take care of it and love it. That was something else. I feel like I've heard my entire life from older people being like, well, you only have one body, like just learn to love it or like cliche things. And at the time I hated my body and I had insecurities and I mean, I still do, but I wish so much I could change the actual, like just my body. And it was something I heard and I hated when people told me that cause I'm like, I get in, like just love yourself. It's the only body you get, blah, 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 whatever. And then I don't know again, if it's maybe just that exhaustion of trying so many different fad diets or trends or workouts or whatever the case is that finally I was just like, okay, Alicia, you've always had these thighs. You're always going to have these thighs. And like these insecurities that I would have like done anything to get rid of at one point. Now I don't mind as much. And I'm like, you know what? Like I'm healthy. And it's so cliche. Like it's so cliche being like, well, I'm healthy and I, my body takes care of me and stuff. But again, I think I just got so tired of trying to change things. And it's like, you know what? Just love the body you're in. And like, and again, 
You get one. You get one. Yeah. You you only get one. You can't change it. Like that's fine. That's fine. You know? Um, so weird. Cause again, cliche. No, but I've heard it so much. And now I feel like I'm giving that same advice to people. Like just like the sooner you can love yourself, the sooner you're just going to be happy. And as much as you want to change things, you just, it's not, it's, I don't know. I don't know. Your priorities change. I, I feel like I've seen that shift in you too, of just mentally being nicer to yourself and physically being nicer to yourself. That makes me so happy. Yeah. The, the effort <laughs> has been a lot. Really? Yeah. I feel like you made it look very natural and seamless and l- like it just kind of happened naturally, organically all- along the way. Another thing that I think sparked that, thank you. Another thing I think sparked that was the amount of times, and again, this just comes with getting older in age and experience, but the amount of times I would look back at my past self and I'd be like, oh my God, I... I wish I just looked like that again. And at the time I like hated how I looked. And then a few more years would go by and I would hate my body, but then two years go by and I look back, oh my God, I didn't know how much I, and I got tired of that. I'm like, Alicia, you're gonna look back in four years and say the same thing about yourself now. So just like get over it, like Mm -hmm. just stop. Because it's just like, you always remember the worst parts in a relationship or the best parts in a relationship afterwards. And I feel like that's the same relationship I've had with my body. Like, I'm like, just stop, like just stop caring so much just stop caring yeah it's true I I don't know if this is factual but this is just my experience let me know if this is your experience too I've gone through so many different uh phases of my body or you know like sizes or just on multiple different journeys if you will um and I've experienced a lot in this one body and the thing that I've kind of found constant is that my body has like almost a a natural physique or weight that it kind of really rests at same throughout my whole life okay there is definitely I'm sure scientific facts facts to it and I haven't researched too much about it but this is just naturally what I felt is I mean everybody has a different physique like my physique is different than like someone who's very very petite and Mm -hmm. just naturally like very very thin and that's just like genetically speaking but my body always kind of naturally rests at like a similar stature that I'm at now Mm -hmm. and I can I've lost weight from here before I've gained weight from here before but I kind of always find this like happy medium right here where I'm at. And it's like, but without having to, it's just like a maintenance mode. Yeah, It's not like I'm trying really hard right now to lose weight. It's not like, and I'm not losing weight and I'm like not trying to like gain weight and I'm not gaining weight. It's Mm -hmm. just like, it kind of rests at a certain physique or like kind of like a, a, an area, I guess. Um, And I feel like once I kind of realized that, and that's only through going through so many different phases, I feel like I just was a lot more gentle on myself because I'm like, this is just naturally like, where I'm at and this is where I'm going to be. And this is the body that I'm given. Oh my God. And totally. it made me go a lot easier on myself because that's, this is something I can't change. Thousand percent. And that's just genetics. Oh my God. A thousand percent. I remember, um, and again, maybe this is just getting older too. I've seen so many comments cause obviously I have friends who are, are now moms or even just in the influencer space, you see, you know, a lot of people are having kids and stuff. And I remember having the thought of would I say that like if I am saying Alicia I hate your legs or I hate my stomach or whatever I would never say that to my daughter ever I also would never say that to my mom like I would you know what I mean like obviously my mom and I are one we're just clones of each other in certain ways and I'm like okay like that's how I'm gonna look when I'm older and I would never say ew that's gross how you look xyz now and especially she was like oh my god my body's changed so much after menopause like she used to never gain weight on her upper half and now she just like does but her legs are like super skinny now where like before she was always a pear shape she's like genetics and hormones like your body's always changing and it's just it's so weird because I'm like I feel like I'm looking to a mirror of like what I'm gonna look like one day and I would never be like, oh my God, you've gained weight. Like I would, it, I, I would never. So why do I do that to myself? Like, yeah. why am I so hard on myself when I would never say that to my friends, my sister, my mom, or my daughter, which I don't have a daughter, obviously, or my, Rosie and Chloe. I'm like, <laughs> I would never be like, <laughs> um, so you're like the vet says she gained a pound. She looks beautiful. Like, you're beautiful, honey. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, I think that, so going back to the negative self-talk, I feel like that's something I've always really struggled with. And I, I do feel like I've been a little more gentle on myself that way. I, you can just, tell. It's just so, again, exhausting. Maybe your thirties are when you're tired. You're tired of giving a shit. You're tired of like people's That's opinions. That's what people say too. Yeah, they're like your twenties. You spent so much of your time worrying about everyone else. Thirties, you just focus on yourself. Yeah, which sounds freeing. No, I will say I'm like I feel like you're already like pretty much there. I just I, I don't want to be there. I want to like I want to hit thirty and be like. Ah. 
I think another thing, this also, I don't know if this is bad advice. I think part of it too is hearing I'm 30 just sounds so old, even though I know it's not. Mm -hmm. So I feel like part of it is Alicia, why the hell are you caring about that? You're fucking 30, get over it. Like that's a whole other part of it. Cool. Is like, Alicia, you're 30, learn how to love your body. Mm -hmm. Like get over it. Like, Mm -hmm. I think that's been a lot of little things for me too of, okay, I had my twenties. Like we found who we are. Okay. Like why are you caring about this? This feels like high school or why are you caring about this? This is like immature. You're 30. Like, I don't know what it is that comes with that. You're 30. Um, and that's kind of the switch too. I think that's really nice to hear though. Something that I'm worried about leaving the twenties behind is that I'll never be able to go back to my twenties. Is that a thought that you had where I like, I've been kind of sad about that morning, the loss of like, not in a morbid way, but kind of in a morbid way where I'm like, wow, I'll never get to go back and experience that again. Like, you know, I could die and I Wait. like, I can't, I can never go back there. Like I could, you know what I mean? Like, I'm so happy that I, I've, well, knock on wood, <laughs> I've like been able to live this, this beautiful life that I'm so grateful for. But there's a part of me that's like, oh, I'll never be able to be 21, 22, 23. I'll never be able to be eight again. I'll never be able to be, be like living at my parents again and being, you know, 15, 16. Like I think about that a lot. And me, the, new fear unlocked. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm kidding, I'm the kidding. The 20s for me, that's what I always think. I'm like, oh, like I'm, what an amazing decade of my life, but I'll never be able to go back. And that makes me sad. I I hear that to an extent. Um, Even when I was younger, I remember being terrified to grow up. And I would like tell my mom, I was like, I'm so scared to grow up. Um, But no, I haven't had that in the sense of 30s at all. I think if anything, I've had the opposite because I think, I remember when I turned 30 last year and we were on vacation and I journaled to myself, I remember thinking, holy shit, like the way I thought I knew who I was and I was such an adult at 20, that's how I am now. And in 10 more years, when I turn 40, yeah, that's it's crazy. So true. I'm going to be thinking about, oh, at 30, I thought I knew who I was and she had so much more life to live. Like, so in a way it's kind of more exciting. Cause I'm like, wow, it feels like a whole fresh start and a new, I don't know. It's like, and also 20 was forever ago. You guys know we are major shoe lovers here at Pretty Basic. I keep talking about how much I love my Macy's wide calf boots. Truly you guys. And I know a lot of you are listening who also have wide calves because All the girlies in the comments are always asking me for wide calf recommendations. And let me tell you, go to Macy's.com and filter through all of their wide calf boots because every single pair has been a stunner. Vince Camudos. I got those ones don't fit me. I have to get extra wide calf. Really? Yes, but that's okay because they have so many options. (laughs) I've got heeled black boots. I got heeled nude boots. I've got cowboy boots like you would Mm. think you don't think about extra wide calf cowboy boots they have them i just don't get how like people that is such a market i are sleeping on it i just told you i got my uh gray suede wide calf boots the other day and i'm so excited to wear them with a gray trench that i have and my gray glasses i planned a whole look and i literally went on macy's and i was like gray suede knee high wide calf boots boom here's the thing do i need any more shoes absolutely not but with the great shoe sale that's happening at macy's from April 9th to April 21st, you can expect 30 to 40% off the latest shoe trends for spring from Madden Girl, Steve Madden, Inc., and more. You guys know I'm the queen of my feet always hurting in all shoes. Uh, Every event we go to, I'm always trying to find a chair (laughs) because my feet hurt so badly. And basically, I am now, I'm like uh, Goldilocks when it comes to shoes. I have to try them on. This one's too big. This one's too small. This one hurts. This one doesn't hurt. And Macy's just has so many options that you can be Goldilocks and you can try on as many as you want. And honestly, a lot of them are really comfortable. So whether you need new shoes or not, shop the great shoe sale happening over at Macy's, shop Macy's.com or in store. With the new podcast, festival season and summer travels, this year is really picking up. I can't believe it's April. I can't believe we're already so far into the year. Needless to say, it's just been crazy. I feel like my life has been crazy right now. And you know what's been there for me? My Impress No Glue Mannies and Impress No Glue Press On Falsies. They've just been coming in clutch during all of this chaos. I am wearing the Impress No Glue Press On Falsies right now. I have raved about these for so long. I think it's been a solid year of me wearing them. I am obsessed with these lashes. Both the nails and the lashes require no glue. So that means there's no drying time. There's no mess. There's no glue in your eye. It's just, they just pop right on. You put them underneath your lashes and they stick for up to 24 hours of wear. 
I also love that there's no damage to your actual lashes or your nails. Also, the nails come in adorable, trendy styles and include a patented super hold adhesive, which makes them last for up to a week. And let me tell you guys, like when you put these on, they are actually stuck. They're not going to fall off. You don't need to bring glue with you everywhere. Like they are absolutely amazing. Also, the press on falsies have tons of styles and feature an underlash application and exclusive self stick technology that guarantees up to 24 hours of wear, which Alicia said. You guys have to try them. You can grab yours now at impressbeauty.com. And my all time favorite thing about both of these is you don't have to sit down for an hour to get long lash extensions. You don't have to sit and get your nails done. It's just so quick and easy. Again, hot mess over here. Always running late, always running out the door and nails that last up to a week. Do you remember growing up and the nails would pop off in like two seconds? Oh my God. Yeah. And I'd have to bring glue with me yeah, everywhere. You'd bring glue with you everywhere. The little when you stickies. Rush, when you brush your hair through your fingers, they get your, their hair gets stuck under oh the my press God. on. Ooh. Ooh. Visit impressbeauty.com slash basic and use code basic at checkout for 25% off impress manicure and press on falsies. Also, I will yeah, say, same, I feel very blessed. Like I had an amazing 20s. Like, yeah, there are certain things I would have changed, but that's everyone. Um, and I feel like I've lived so much life in my 20s. And I'm like, wow, I really did the damn thing. You That's know? how I feel too. And I'm like, I don't want to leave it behind. No, bitch, we st- we're going to Japan and Korea. I know, but <laughs> like, we have so much. I oh know. my God. I just feel really reminiscent. Yeah. And I like, I just keep, I'm clinging on to it. I think I'm going to actually have a harder time turning 30 than you did. And then I think you even think I will. Like, I, I'm really sad about it. But you got one more year. Not even. I yeah. have like eight months. Ugh. Eight months. Eight months. No, I think you're going to fucking love it. Mm. I think you're going to love it. And on top of it, you're going to be getting married. Like, I don't know. I just, I feel like, I feel like you're going to love it. You and Ash have really prepped me for. Really? Yeah. Oh. Well, especially because Ash is significantly older, mm-hmm. like watching her go through it. Because when you and I were just getting close, she turned 30. Mm-hmm. And I remember being at that point, too, it was so not even on my radar. Were you 25 then? I think she's how much older is she? Three than years you? older. Yeah, than she's me. five years older than me. So, yeah, I was like 25. I'm like, oh, 30 so far away. Like, oh, my, I haven't even thought about being 30. And then watching her turn 30 and watching her find love and do all these things. I'm like, that's actually really cool and exciting and amazing. Yeah. So it's been, she's prepped me in a way that I think she doesn't even know. Oh, I feel like a lot of my friends actually are older and some, and you know, a lot of my friends are. Um, and I feel lucky that I've been able to watch that too. Even just being the younger sister, being able to see her go through it. Cause three years is not that big of a difference, mm-hmm. but it feels so big. Like when she turned 27, I was like, oh, you're so old and mature. And yeah, then cause I you're turned in your like mid 20s. Yeah. 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 And then I was like, oh my God, like what? So it's always weird when I turned the age that she was that I thought was so old and 30 yeah. was obviously one of them. I'm like, I remember when she turned 30, I thought it was crazy. I want to talk to her about that. One oh time when God. you're out, I'm going to have her on and I'm just going to like ask her all these questions. I'm curious. I, uh, you got, feel free to shit talk to me the whole time. It's totally <laughs> fine. It's totally fine. I accept it. I'm here for it. Honestly, I'll, t- I'll tune in. Of it's rare for me to not. re-listen to one of these episodes and I'll be, I'll tune in. <laughs> I just have so many questions for her, especially being the older sister. Like that's, yeah. that has to be scary and hard for her. You know what? The other day, I, you were in my head, um, about how I was, I think it was the night after you opened up on the generational trauma episode. Mm -hmm. And I think that night she was doing something and I forget what conversation we were having, but I remember, I think she was talking about mom and dad or like venting about something. And I was like, I'm sorry, that must be really hard that you've had to go through things first. And she was like, it has, thank you. And I was like, Remy would be so proud of me. I did my homework because I've gotten away. Like, obviously there's so many things in my life that have been easy and breezy for me because she already dealt with them in that capacity yeah you know yeah there is a lot that I feel like gets overlooked with older siblings and obviously it's not like crazy traumatizing things but there are there are things that definitely stick with you so I'm sure she really appreciated oh my God. that well I hope she noticed her with me doing the homework like oh my god I'm <laughs> such a good sister and she's like yeah thanks <laughs> um I'm proud of you and I'm sure that meant a lot to her no I, That's really I sweet. hope so I'm trying to think if there's anything else well, yeah what else was on the TikTok I wow I don't miss anything and I miss this TikTok and the one thing that I needed to see <laughs> I did comment on your um fashion one you did the other day okay people have been coming for me in those and I'm like oh oh I, I just re- said why are you wearing your shoes in the house I was showing one of my outfit don't wear your shoes in there your was, house there were so many there were so many <laughs> It's an Asian thing, huh? Oh, in the it, background I w- of the PXU episode. Oh my god, <laughs> me! I was like, is it a white people thing? <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh my god, um, which like it is. Like I feel like just like dads wearing their tennis shoes all day from morning to night. Oh, I'll wear like my my workout shoes out and about 
to the airport. Mm-hmm. I'll be like in a bathroom and I think like, oh my God, ew, what if I walk through my house in these? See, I never grew up with that and I wish I did. <laughs> I wish I did because it feels so odd to me to ask someone to take their shoes off when they come into the house. But I wish it was just a thing. What you have to do is just it is stack, disgusting. stack shoes by the front door. So people are like, oh, they take their shoes off. In also, house. I mean, me with my shoes on the couch right now. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> but like... <laughs> <laughs> that's okay i mean it's different than your living area i think it's just yeah i mean either way i wouldn't do it even like having Super parties i'm like people are like should i take my shit i'm like it's fine like yeah. it's part of the fit <laughs> but then you can like really scrub the floors after. yeah yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah i truly am like i'm in like public restrooms i'm like ew no it's imagine disgusting I wore these in the house i'll like walk on my walking treadmill upstairs but i'll carry my shoes up with me and then i'll put them on the treadmill and then i'll take them off like i literally don't step anywhere on them <laughs> I think it's a white people thing. We're so it's different. disgusting. We're so different. So sorry though. Continue on. Your oh, outfits. No. Oh no, I was just saying, um I got a lot of <laughs> I got a lot of people commenting on it like, oh no, I'm hoping this is April Fool. <laughs> <gasps> Which outfit? It was a date night one. The black and, outfit? Yeah, and I was like, obviously it wasn't like it was I fine. It was cute. Like it was fine. But I, like the amount I was like the tights one, I get. Okay, I get. Wait, what was the problem with the black outfit? No, like it was to the point where I was like, I don't even know. And I'm just going to, I don't know. I was like, I don't know. Where was there constructive criticism? Um, feel free to look at the comments later on our lunch break. <laughs> later. later. <laughs> I don't want to hear them. But it was just like, oh shit. I was like, damn. Like, But it did get like, it was going viral. I thought it was cute. I mean, it was fine. Like even me, I was like, How did, like whatever. Like, let's just but go. It's, it's just a black top, black shoes, black pants, black jacket. I know. I did end up switching my top and my jacket for the actual date. Can we get into the date of it all? Um, we talked about it on PXU and it already went live. So can oh, we get it into it a little bit? It yeah. did. Um, it was okay. I feel like even, I feel like even in the episode, I was like, oh, you should like make it seem more exciting because it is more exciting. But I was just like, for context, Alicia and Zane on an episode of PXU, Keith and I challenged them and it's fun. I just went on Hoot and a Half and Matt was like, it's so fun to watch like two singles and two engaged people because it's such a different dynamic. Oh no, it's, it's, it's so fun. I love it. I'm over here like, I just need to go on a date and you're like, we're planning our wedding. Like it's <laughs> so different. It's I was so just, different. I was talking to Chesco about it the other night at his birthday dinner and he was saying, cause I was like, he's turning 30 and I was like, what do you want for your thirties? Like, what are you looking forward to this year? And he was like, it's time to start dating. He's mm-hmm. like, it's, I need to set my hinge back up. I want to get back out on the town. And I was like, what, what are you holding back from dating? And he was like, I hate similar to you, similar to Zane, similar to Ollie, similar to everybody in my life is like, I just hate the idea of going on a date and having to make small talk and having to have these like small conversations over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And, um, Ollie was like, yeah, I agree with that. And he was saying, he's like, I, when Chesco and I started getting close was the era when I was like, just dating for fun. Yeah. And he's like, I just never have ever had that, that want to do so. And Ollie was like, she would just go out and be like, whatever happens, happens. Yeah. And I need everybody to try and have that mindset. I was like, everybody, we need to do like a intervention. An intervention. <laughs> I'll have you all come over to my house and Cal and I will do a PowerPoint for you guys. Wait, I love that. It's so low stakes. Like who cares? Who actually cares? I know, but it makes me feel so much better that there are other people who feel that way. I think the majority, honestly. I know, but I think I've always felt like the odd one out that way because I'm like everyone else loves dating and they're constantly going on dates like what is wrong with me like what is wrong with me obviously there's, there's wrong I know but it, it makes it makes you feel like damn like I should <laughs> care right like I should try harder right um so it does make me feel better that there are those those people for sure because I'm like I think I don't I don't know. I mean, if everybody felt that way, single people would not exist. So don't be hard on yourself. Very true. But I need you all to change your mindset. You're right. Like someone, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, some people are single because they think that a date for 15 to 20 minutes is acceptable. And that it proves my point as why I will not get ready for someone to only see me for 30 minutes. Understood. And that's true. When I was playing that for Cal, Cal was dying oh laughing. Oh my God. He's like, he thinks a 15 minute date is okay. I, when I watched back the clips, Zane was very much like, no, no, no. Like if I don't like it and I want to leave. And I was like, even then, that's better, but still no. I stand on my, it's, but here's the thing to me, the beginning of the date and the end are more awkward. So it's easier for me to sit in my seat and make a little more small talk or have one more drink to make it be longer. Yeah. It's the, okay, I'm ready to go now. That, yeah. that oh my, I'm like, oh. I gotta run. No, completely. So on but the I've episode- learned, I've learned when I go into a date, even if I don't have plans after to be like, oh yeah, I'm meeting my friend at nine. Like, even if I don't, just so I have that out. And that way it's not like, 
Oh, at another nine, you're drink. Obsessed. You're like, it's fine. I canceled. Oh, totally. But the, you can do that. You can yeah. be like, oh, she canceled on me. Oh, <laughs> I guess I'm free. So that's an easier. But going back to the date that I was on. Um, yes. He was nice. Wait, wait, wait. I didn't lay out what had happened. Oh, sorry. No, you're so fine. Heath and I challenged Alicia and Zane to make a date by the next time we recorded. Mm -hmm. And they both made individual dates. And then went on the dates at a said location and then met up halfway through to talk about the dates and conspire about what's been going on and then go back to the regular dates. And then we talked about it on the podcast. It was funny because Heath was like, oh, it'll be like, like um, you'll have like emotional support. Like someone else is going through with doing it with you. And I was like, no, it, it sounded great in theory. But then once I was there, I was like, now I'm, I'm just like, like I'm trying not to look towards their table. Yeah. Now I'm like, can they overhear our conversation? Can the person next, I like, I hate, like there was so much more in my head. So in a way I was like, this wasn't more fun. It was fun, but it was, I I mean, I would do it again if I had to, but not like, it wasn't like, oh my God, that made it so much easier. Yeah. Do you know what well, I mean? Well, because you've talked about that idea for so long, like with all groups of friends, like, oh my God, we should all do a date or whatever, like a double I'm date always or down, whatever. I, I think a double date would have been better because we're at least all together. Like the idea of like, oh, I, I can't look like I know yeah. who that is. Like it felt like when someone says, don't say the word the, and then you're constantly thinking like, the like, yeah like, like, yeah that's how I felt um the guy was okay he he uh, you said he was kind of douchey he was just I explained this to Ashley and she was she she said that's all you need to tell me I was like he's in sales um he did tell me that he used to do promoting and he didn't really ask me any questions and was just trying to show off and she's like that's all you need to say like and I, and I was like, here's the thing. It's not that I have a thing against promoters, but- Vin Dizzle Vegas. If you ever know a promoter, you just, I feel like they're always flirting with girls, saying it's their job and they need to schmooze and network. And I just, I got the vibe that he was like, oh, I'm gonna impress her with money. And like, he, I don't know. He like mentioned like a certain watch brand he had. I was like, I don't care. Like, I actually don't care if you know me. We did say though- which obviously, yeah, that's kind of yuck. Like that's not what you want to hear. Yeah. Some girls want that. Some yeah, people totally. want that, not you. But maybe there's a chance he was nervous. So that's something I think in the past I would've been like, ew, no, hard no, I would never go on a second date. And I was like, you know what? Like, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he was nervous. And like, maybe I wasn't, I'm, I wasn't the exact way that I am when you get, you know, it's a first date. So like I would go on a second one. Um, but my gut's telling me it wouldn't go further than that. And that's okay. And yeah. also you don't even have to go on a second one, but I think that is a, a good way to like be gracious yeah. with these people. Oh my God, no, a thousand percent. So- um, You have another date scheduled anytime soon? This is where I was just telling my friend this morning, I was like, I'm struggling so much because I want the guys to initiate and I'm on these apps and I'm like, if I've had more than three back or forth conversation, ask, ask me out. Well, like, I agree. Yeah. And they won't like, I don't. And she was like, it's guys in LA. I fucking swear. And I was like, I know, like, I don't want to be the one being like, Hey, like, let like, Oh, when are we getting drinks? Or like, what? like I'm happy to like, ugh. I don't want to do that. But also I'm like, it has it come to that. Cause I'm just like, ugh. well, also it's kind of puzzling when they on their profile i'm sure right like looking for long-term relationship to be in a relationship yeah. yeah and then if you've had like a full conversation and nothing's coming of it and i hate those small talk convert like so i i think for me i'm just I'm like, do you hate the small talk online more or hate the small talk in real life more i've gotten i used to hate online more i would be almost mute in the sense of i don't know what to say and i think now another thing with turning 30 is i was like i'm just gonna put my humor and if you don't get it then you you suck because you don't get it like it's a joke you know what i mean yeah um where before i would think of oh my god what should i say to this guy versus <laughs> um versus me just saying how i would normally text my friends um and that's been a huge change too for sure i think um low stakes Mm -hmm. Low stakes, if you don't go on a date, low stakes. Low stakes, if it's only a conversation, low stakes. Low stakes, you go on a date, it doesn't work out, low stakes. I Who know. cares? At least, you know what? <laughs> What's sad is the fact that my main motivating factor is just to have more dating stories. <laughs> Like, that's so sad. Whatever gets you through you know the day, what? girl. We gotta start somewhere. But also, you know what? I think that you can't chase those because those have to come and they just come naturally. Then I'm gonna be like, oh, he's perfect. Like exactly. when I scaled the wall, it wasn't like, oh my God, this is going to be so good on the podcast. You know what I mean? Like it oh no, has, a thousand percent. has to come naturally. But <laughs> you just got to want to scale that wall. I got to listen to that episode again because I forget. Remember we were going to do- Listening back and reacting? Yes. I mean, I don't want to because what a dark time in my life. No, I think you'd love it. I just, it's so, I can put myself right back in that mindset of like when I was at the bottom of the wall being like, oh, 
I got to get up higher. Like I, I'm like back. It's, it's literally pitch black outside. I'm on the, the, the popcorn stucco oh wall. My God. Like I can put myself right back in, your in that. leather in skirt that. and knee high boots. I wonder what I was wearing. I'm pretty sure it was. A- I think I was wearing workout clothes though. Cause I was coming to meet you to work out. Like, I think I was at least in agile. No, I am pretty equipment. sure you were planning on going back to your uh, apartment. Oh, to change. Oof. I don't know. And that's why when you did- You I, know, we could know if we went back and listened. Yes. I just don't care to put myself through that. I think you'll listen and you'll be like, oh, it wasn't as bad as I thought. Or or you're, you would think that you felt a weird way. And then when you're back, you're like, oh my God, ew. I think it's just so embarrassing to look back and hear yourself being so down bad, like miserably crying down every episode. bad for no, for, <sighs> for no reason. Like I'm good on that actually. You're like, he said he was in love with me. <laughs> yeah, I just don't know. I like wish, the confusion. I wish I had been more candid during like my dating time because I, yeah. I obviously didn't say a lot because I was worried that people would hear. But now knowing that like I have never spoken to any of those people again, I could have gone balls to the wall oh and God, that would have so been right. funny. Oh my God, you're so right. And I think so you should. So I should be more I think balls you should. to the walls. Okay. I think okay. you should. I'll say, I think that you should. Oh. You teach me, I teach you. Perfect. This is how we bounce each other. Yes. Um, well, wow, this has been great all over the place. Do you have any more things to add to anybody turning 30? Um, cute shoes. Thank you. Rag and bone. They're very cute. They're different for me, right? Yeah. You kind of look like a skater girl. You look <gasps> like you go to the, the vans off the wall at the block. Well, that means Skate so park. much. You don't even know. <laughs> my, these pants are so wrinkled. But. You look like you go to the Venice skate park on the weekends. Oh my God. Just like a cool girl. Yeah. You're so cool. Wow. I love that. Okay. Anything else to add to anybody turning th- over here, me turning 30, anything you'd like to teach me? One thing that clicked for me, skincare. Suddenly I'm obsessed with it. That was another wow. thing I've always heard. It was, that was overnight. Yeah. I, because my skin changed overnight. I've always heard people say, yeah, you, your skin starts to change. Like as you get older, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, hey, whatever, that's too far. Like, I don't have to deal with that. I swear overnight, my skin just was different. I would break out differently. Um, the, the texture of my skin was, di- it was just different. And I was, I, I was like, <gasps> I wish I'd been wearing my SPF every day. Like I was like <gasps> suddenly thinking okay. back to my 20, I was just like, oh my God, I always, if something else I always heard and was so tired of hearing people say, wear your sunscreen, do your skincare, take off your makeup, blah, blah, blah. I was like, whatever. And because my skin changed overnight, suddenly I started caring about my skincare overnight. Um, so I ended my TikTok with like, do your skincare. Any products that you Less demand we use? Oh. I I use a gentle cleanser. Mm-hmm. I used to think my skin was so tough and could handle anything. Turns out my skin was actually more sensitive. So I was doing way more harm than good. <gasps> so a gentle cleanser and like a simple moisturizer is everything. Okay. Everything. Nothing else? Um, The skin... I mean, I use other serums, but I think more than anything is I will like triple wash my face to get my makeup off before I would just use a makeup wipe. I'll use the cleansing balm with the towelette, wash my face, then use face wash just to get my makeup off, especially when I'm wearing so much, so much makeup. Then I'll even use my cleanser to do one time of my skin so it can actually get into my pores. Yeah, I feel that. Um, So that's been something I've been very diligent with and I've gotten so many compliments on my skin lately. And I've definitely like, I mean, I'm using like serums and other things like that, but I swear just the amount of effort I've put into it, I feel like has actually been rewarding, which is so nice. It look, I mean, everything from over here seems effortless oh. to me. It really does. Like wow. all everything that you talked about, I feel like it, I didn't realize how much effort had been put in, but for good use. Oh my God. Well, thank you so much. You're so welcome. You're crushing it. You really are. Oh my God. One thing that you want to happen in your early thirties or in your year of 31, what's something that you want to happen? Um, are you looking forward to? My friend had mentioned this to me and it was something that I, I distinctly, I also resonated with. She said she feels like her twenties fear a lot of her twenties and decisions was ruled by fear and she held herself back from a lot of things she would have just naturally done and wishes she did that. So she said in her thirties, she like doesn't overthink things and just does things, which obviously to some people that might be bad advice, but I feel like to people like me who've like held themselves back from like, whether it's fear or fear of rejection or like all these different things, she's just like, just don't know, just do whatever feels natural. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. Like, and if you, regret it later, that's actually okay. It's actually a good thing because you've learned from it versus just living in a state of fear of like, well, I'm too scared to like change my job or I'm too scared to do it. Like, and the way she worded it was so eloquent and beautiful. And I was like, I relate to that so much. So I think just living more in the moment. And I know we've always said like live in the moment, but I think just not overthinking the outcome of different situations or not overthinking, I don't know. And the way she worded it, I was like, yes, that's what I want because I feel that too. I feel like it's, you get older too, 
those decisions will, it won't even be necessarily a decision. You'll just gut reaction do it. Well, and life now feels so fragile and it's like, wow, like we don't know how long we have. And also you are, this is the youngest I'll ever be. And you know, there's so many different factors that I feel like come into it. Or when am I going to want to start having kids? Because maybe these are the last literal few years of my actual life. I'll be single. And like, that's crazy. And I don't want to spend those years just wishing I was in a relationship. Do you know what I mean? For sure. Like yeah. that's actually like really like once you're in a relationship, like that's your person. And then you have like your life is forever changed. And it's like this single time is actually a special time. Yeah. Looking back on my single time too, it was so much shorter from when I actively started dating than, than I had anticipated. Yeah. And obviously I'm so happy and I love Cal so much, but like it was so, it was so short lived and I would have been okay had it gone on longer, even though in the moment I was like, this is ag well, and, agony. And, yes, and in the moment you feel like you're forever alone. Yeah. Like you truly feel like your whole life is gonna be, and it's, it's not. Yeah. So I think um, I really resonated to what she said about that. Um, so yeah, do your skincare. Love it. Um, wear your sunscreen. Wear your sunscreen. Go with your gut. Go with your gut. Don't care. You're allowed, you can pick where you put your mental energy. You know? That's good. That's good, right? That's, That's good. Really good. Yeah. I'm gonna use that. Um, so anyways, I hope that helped you. For sure. <laughs> I, I, I'm looking forward to even hearing more, I'm sure, as you hit 31. Oh my God. Ah, uh, so wise and so mature over here. <laughs> anyways, guys, thank you so much for listening to another episode of Pretty Basic. If you've made it to the end, I feel like they should comment below. Comment down below. Ooh, comment below a question or like comment below advice you want if you're under 30. And then if you're over 30, leave a like advice in the comments. Like That's I feel great. like that would be a cool little like community thing um, because I'm, I also want to look at it. So I feel like that'd be really, I don't know, really fun and cool. Little journal entries. Little journal entries. We love you guys so much and we will see you next week with a new episode and we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.